Hello there and welcome to this first part or the introduction of this valuation course that I was asked to do for quite some time. But here it is. I hope that you enjoy it. And if you have any questions or comments along the way or feedback, feel free to share that in the comment section below. Now, this first video will be all about the structure of the course and setting clear expectations about the course. And we're going to wrap this video with some information gathering. And by that, I mean downloading certain publicly available information that will help us in the process of valuing a company. Now, the second video, as you can see, will be all about how to read a 10K or the annual report and 10Q or the quarterly report. The third video is all about the valuation template that I use. We're going to follow up with analyzing the historical data and we're going to wrap the course with setting some assumptions about the future and valuing a company as a whole. Now, before we move into the information gathering part, there are a few points that I'd like to point out. First of all, the most effective way to learn pretty much anything is to apply the knowledge. So I suggest that you choose a company to value on your own and follow the process and you're going to have plenty of questions along the way. And that's actually perfect because that is, of course, how the knowledge improves over time by having a lot of questions and getting the answers to those questions. Second, this is not the only way to value companies. This is the approach that has worked for me. And of course, I'm going to share the rationale behind that. But if at some point you find something that works better for you or you want to make some tweaks, whether that's to the approach or to the template, feel free to do so. Third, although this course might seem relatively long compared to the ones that last 30 minutes and claim to teach you everything, this is not a course that will make you an expert. It is all about setting the base or understanding the fundamentals of the valuation process. But there's a lot more to learn in order to become an expert. The more companies you value, the more questions you have, the more answers you obtain, the better you become. And of course, every subsequent valuation, well, it will take you a lot less time to complete. Lastly, all of these questions that pop up, try to find the answer on Google. Google is your friend in this case. And if you have a certain question, it is very likely that someone else had the same question. So the answer is readily available. Of course, if that's not the case, you can always make use of the comment section below. Now, as mentioned in the structure of the course, the next part is gathering publicly available information. Now, I'm not sure which company you're going to value, but this section is all about showing the process of how you can obtain the publicly available information for your particular company. So here I've chosen four companies completely different in completely different industries. Nike, the last one is the one that I will be valuing throughout the videos, um, of course, but I will be going back and forth and showing the differences between different companies. And I have to balance the length of the content uh, with the quality or, or the information that I provide within. And I'll try to do my best in that regard. So what we're looking for is, in this case, for every company that I decided to get this public information, I just added annual report. There will be plenty of links that on first glance will actually get you the annual report. But I'm looking for the investor relations because I don't only want to get the annual report, but also some other information that are relevant. So for every company, there will be a link that leads you to this investor relations or the separate segment that the company has that is dedicated for sharing these information that are relevant for a lot of stakeholders, but especially the investors. So both the existing ones and the potential ones. So I'm going to use this link invest relations for Dropbox. If we take a look at Levi's, the first link, as you can see in the link itself, investors.levistrauss.com. That is the link that we're looking for. Then Upwork, again, the first link investors.upwork.com. That is the one that we need. And for Nike, investors.nike.com. Again, the second one, the third one will get me the report, but I need some more information. So let's take a look at all these four. What is the process that we will go through? So how do we find the annual report? Sometimes you might have to scroll a bit below, but oftentimes if there are these sections within financials, 
you will find a couple of them. So for example, SEC findings or the filings that the company had to file to the Security and Exchange Commission include the annual and quarterly reports. So when that is the case, you will notice that here we have all the filings and the ones that we need are of course the annual reports or the 10K. And here we can see four of them popping up. We can get the quarterly findings or 10K and depending on what you need, of course, there are other information such as merger acquisitions, not sure if they had any. So of course, not available for Dropbox. There's a lot of information here, but what is also useful, the reason why I wanted to get to this page is oftentimes there will be some news releases that might be important and might actually have an impact on your evaluation. Now, in the case of Dropbox, as we can see, it's all um, not that relevant. It's just publishing the regular results that they have. But for some companies, they might announce an acquisition that is not reflected in the latest annual or quarterly report. The next thing is investor presentation. So sometimes within news and events, you will find a presentation that is, here it is, investor presentation. So what this is, is basically once in a while, every company or most companies have these investor days. And during those days, there's a, a presentation that is provided by the management that not only covers the historical performance, so how well or how poorly they did in the past, but they outline some information about the future, some guidance, a bit longer term in nature. So it could be the next three, five, 10 years. So you have a feeling of, what is the management aiming for, what they want to achieve in the long run, and how they intend to get there. So these information are, of course, since they're forward looking, that doesn't mean that that's exactly what will happen, but it gives you an idea of the management's targets. And it is not available for every company, but when it is available, it makes sense to take a look at it and kind of see the, the information that is out there and whether that can be used in the process of valuing the company that you've chosen to. For example, this is for Levi Strauss. As you can see, the annual report pops right out of the gate. You see it's, it's on the first slide. Here's the one, maybe I should zoom in a little bit. So here's the 2021 annual report. Again, we have this financial section. We have the SEC filings, but we also have the annual and quarterly results separately so probably quarterly results will also give us the 10k sorry the 10q in this case for the quarterly and 10q for q4 for example so getting this information isn't that difficult isn't that challenging again events and presentation and we have news here separately so in the case of dropbox they were both together news and events here it's separate however again it's not that difficult to get to them so you might want to take a look at those and of course the presentation. So here we see we have the investor day um, not that long ago. We can click on that. Here's the presentation and you might want to go through it. Maybe I'll, I'll go to a couple of slides just to give you an idea of what you can expect. Uh, because oftentimes, you see this one is 169 pages. So in most cases, these will be relatively long presentations, but of course they have a lot of, for example, disclaimers and, and other information that are not that relevant. But once in a while you might find somewhere a bit um, cl closer to the end. For example, here's what they intend to do. They want to have total shareholder return above 10%, 10 to 12%. And you might get some information on how they intend to get there, the strengths of the business, this is, of course, a bit shorter term, 2022, but I'm sure that they have um, some information. Probably here's some information about 2027. So how what they intend to, or they intend to increase the revenue by six to eight percent over the next five years. And this is not information that you'll find anywhere else except for um, the investor presentation. In in the thank you and thank yous, those are historical looking, and oftentimes in in the earnings they might. Uh, give guidance for the next quarter or the next year, but not more than that. So these type of presentations might help you in the process. Now let's take a look at Upwork. Again, we have annual reports quite clear. We have the financials. So SEC, quarterly report results, annual reports. So it's quite similar structure. 
news and events, quite, again, easy to gather. Um, let's take a look at events and presentation. So we do have, again, the investor day available. And we also have a company presentation, which kind of gives an inf some information about the company, what it does, and um, some general information that, again, might be useful at the initial stage to understand what the company does. Now, Nike will be the company that I'll be valuing. So you see, on first glance, we don't see these financials and, and the same segments as we saw in the previous companies. But down here, here's the annual report. I'm recording this in September of 2022, so it might seem odd that the 2022 annual report is already available. But of course, this is a report that is probably for the year ending earlier than December, of course. It's, as you can see, it's up until May 31st of 2022. So, of course, it starts as of June 1st up until May 31st the next year. So the year itself, every time that you see a report, doesn't mean that it is following the, the financial, the, the calendar year, the fiscal year, of course, in, in many cases will differ. So to get ready for the next um, videos, what I would suggest is download the latest annual report. So for example, for Nike, actually, this will be, this will be not only the latest annual report, but also the latest report with the latest available numbers. But for example, for Upwork, um, I'm quite sure that the annual report, since it's 2021, it's probably for the period up until December. So yeah, so we have up until December, but at, as I'm recording this, it's September. So I'm sure that there are at least two more quarters. So in that case, take a look at, for example, the SEC filings. The results, you can also take a look at it, but oftentimes in here, they don't have the, the 10Q, so the, the actual filing, but the, for example, summary of the results. So take a look at the SEC filings. Again, choose quarterly filings and let's see what is the latest one. So this is the latest one. It's as of, of course, two quarters. So as of 30th of June. And here you can download it. So this is the one that's that, that has the latest number. So always take at least one annual report as we're going to go through that in the next video and take the latest quarterly report if the annual report isn't the latest uh, one that has the most recent information. And I'll go back to the structure of the course, just so I'll leave you with this at the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. This is the preliminary structure. I intend to go through this information. And if at some point uh, you stumble upon some sort of information that you're too familiar with. So for example, if you've read hundreds of 10Ks or 10Qs, well, maybe that will not be that useful. So just skip that video and move to the next one. Again, if certain questions pop up way too often, I will make another video following these five if that adds value. So thank you for following until the very end. I hope you're ex excited as I am and I'll see you in the next one.